Hi, welcome to another episode of Medicine Simplified. Today we will know about tetanus, its pathophysiology, classification, diagnosis and treatment. Coming to the definition of tetanus, it is an acute, often fatal, infectious neurological disease that caused by contamination of wounds from bacteria known as Clostridium tetanae, which lives in soil and animal feces. Tetanus is an infection characterized by state of generalized hypertonia that manifests in the form of painful muscle spasms of jaw and neck. Spasms from tetanus may last from minutes to weeks. Symptoms are caused by toxins produced by bacterium Clostridium tetanae. Clostridium tetanae is slender, gram positive and drumstick in appearance. The disease most commonly occurs in unvaccinated individuals or elderly patients with compromised immunity. Coming to the pathophysiology of tetanus, Clostridium tetanus secretes toxins. First one is tetanospasmin and tetanolysin, causing the characteristic tetanic spasms. Tetanospasmin affects the nerve and muscle motor and plate interaction, causing the clinical sign of rigidity muscle spasm and autonomic instability. Tetanolysin damages the surrounding tissue. Tetanus pores enters the body and germinate in the wound. Germination needs particular anaerobic condition such as dead and devitalized tissue. After germination, they release tetanospasmin into bloodstream. This toxin enters the presynaptic terminals in neuromuscular end plate of motor neuron and suppress motor neuron and muscle activity leading to paralysis of muscle fibers. They also enter CNS via neurons and inhibit neurotransmitter release which leads to tetanic spasms. Incubation period can last from 1 to 60 days. Coming to the classification of tetanus, there are two types. First one is clinical classification. Second one is ablet tetanus severity classification. Coming to clinical classification, it is classified into generalized, which is a most common type. There is a trismus or law jock followed by stiffness of neck muscles. Difficulty in swallowing, rigid abdominal muscles, high temperature, sweating and abnormal blood pressure. Spasms continues for 3 to 4 weeks. Second one is neonatal. It is a form of generalized tetanus that occurs in newborn infants due to lack of innate immunity. Usually occurs through infection of unhealed umbilical stem. Third one is localized. Contraction of muscles are limited to site of injury. Fourth one is cephalic or cerebral. There is involvement of cranial nerves, especially in facial area like trigeminal and facial nerve. Occasionally occurring with Otis media or following a head injury. Coming to the ablate severity classification, grade 1, which is mild. Coming to the signs, mild trismus, general spasticity, no respiratory compromise, no spasm, and no dysphagia. Grade 2, moderate. Signs like moderate trismus, rigidity, short spasms, mild dysphagia. Moderate respiratory involvement. Respiratory is more than 30 breaths per minute. Grade 3. 
severe severe crispness rigidity prolonged spasms severe dysphagia apneic spells pulses more than 20 beats per minute and respiratory rate increased to more than 40 breaths per minute grade 4 very severe grade 3 with autonomic dysfunction coming to the diagnosis the diagnosis of tetanus is entirely clinical and does not depend upon any bacteriologic confirmations clostridium tetanus is recovered from wound in only 30% of cases and can be isolated from patients who do not have tetanus tetanus should especially be suspected when there is a history of an antecedent tetanus prone injury and history of inadequate immunization for tetanus coming to the treatment of tetanus the treatment of tetanus is based on severity of the disease however all patients must have following goals of treatment first one is early wound debridement second supportive management third antibiotic therapy fourth early intramuscular or intravenous administration of human tetanus immunoglobulins which is also known as htig fifth neuromuscular blockers final one managing complications of tetanus the first line treatment for tetanus includes htig which removes released tetano spasmin toxin htig also shortens the course of illness and may also help in reducing the severity of tetanus a dose of 500 units either intramuscular or intravenous is an effective as large doses htig is injected intraethically especially in case of cerebral tetanus metronidazole has been shown to slow the progress of tetanus disease baclofen can also be given intrathecally and is found to be effective in controlling the muscle rigidity if you like this video please do subscribe to our channel thank you